McFarlane offers up something new to get hooked on. Here's your look at the new McFarlane Toys. This is the Mortal Kombat exclusive variant of Scorpion. Grandmaster Scorpion of the Shirai Ryu, driven by rage, Henzo Hasashi went through hell and back to avenge his family and clan, never resting until he cut down their murderer, Quan Chi. Now he leads a reborn Shirai Ryu, avenging those who cannot avenge themselves. To get this review underway, the first thing, as we always normally do on this channel, is to figure out how tall the figure stands. In this case, the exclusive version of Scorpion, we're gonna stop the tape measure right to the very top there. While I'm also calculating those numbers for you, I'd like to send a big thank you to the folks from McFarland Toys. We're nice enough to send these my way. According to my trusty tape measure, uh, the figure stands 7.1 inches in height. Now, one thing I do wanna also consider is I've got them at a wider stance. A couple of people have asked in the past, well, wouldn't the best measurement be by having the legs as closest to possibly together as they can be so that, you know, you would get the proper height? That is true. The figure themselves, each figure, for a standing sake, you're probably not going to have them dead straight center like a clothes peg. You're probably going to have them at a wider stance. On average, the figures, I'm usually going to give you the rough calculations of what these figures stand. You can always, of course, accommodate you know, adjust the height accordingly, depending on how you're going to display the figure, if that makes any sense. 7.1 inches, after all said and done and all the yammering later, 7.1 inches in height is the exclusive version of Scorpion, and that translates to 18 centimeters exactly. Just in case you guys wanted to see some height differences between these figures, some scale comparisons, if you will, here's the exclusive version of Sub-Zero that we just recently had a look at. And here's also Johnny Cage, just to kind of give you a, a rough idea. They're about all the same height to one another, give or take, maybe by a hair or so, one's a little bit taller than the other, but they're all roughly about the same height to one another. Usually, this is the part of the review where we have a look at the accessories, and Scorpion is no exception to that. The first one we'll have a look at is the display stand, a circular black display stand that comes included with the figure. A bit of a more shinier surface plastic to the DC Multiverse figures that we've had a look at that usually tends to be more of the matte surface. And this one has the Mortal Kombat scripture written along the bottom. One singular peg greets you at the door and one singular peg will dictate how you want to stand your figure. You really don't necessarily need more than one. A lot of times, if anything, I just display the figure with like one foot on the side and then like the other foot is way out here. So you do get yourself a display stand. I always love the fact that we do get those included. Uh, let's have a look at a couple of these sheaths. He comes with two of these and there's some assembly that's required. That's why I wanted to look at those first before we have a look at the kunai. The sheaths vary in size, but both share the same similar color scheme, gold and green. You can see they're in metallic. They are really nice. I love the fact that really all these figures I mean, the coloring here in the gold reminds me of the Raiden that we had a look at most recently. And really, the level of paint that they put in these pieces is really quite spectacular. You do get two sheaths, and to go along with that, you get two broad swords. One, a katana, and a smaller version of that with a smaller blade. The handles, again, look identical to one another, just a smaller miniature version of the longer one on this side. The handles, like I said, are done in the same similar color of brown with that same exquisite color of that metallic gold. I like the look of that. And then you are treated to like an emerald blade. I really like the coloring of these. It pops quite well against the backdrop of what will be a very changed out color scheme for Scorpion. But let me show you how everything comes together for these. You're going to go ahead and take the figure. And there's no instructions really included with these. Uh, but you'll you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. Basically, what you get is like a Y-shaped uh, connector point. You can see there's pegs on both sides, rectangular pegs. And you'll also see there's three slots. Kind of looks like a plug in a wall outlet. But you're going to go ahead and just finagle one in, plug that in place. Now, this one, I don't, I can't seem to quite get it completely in there. But certainly one peg is enough to keep that stable, that it's not going to be going anywhere. You can also add the additional support of having this piece right here, the secondary sheath, it's gonna connect right here, right in the middle. 
and that one fits a lot easier and sort of actually does a good job of hiding the fact that you didn't quite get it completely in there. I might take a bit of a screwdriver, I think, and see if I can open up that area just a little bit more. I don't, I don't think the hole is as big as it should be to accommodate the peg for the sheath. Once that's in place, you probably already know which one goes where. I mean, that's, yeah, too, too small. That's going to go right in here. It just slides into place. Obviously, you can fit these into Scorpion's hands as well. But I'm just doing this for the sake of showing you guys. And then we're going to go ahead and fit this one in, making sure, of course, you follow the same curve. You don't want to have it going in this way. And then you just line that up and slide into place. It's a tight quarters for the swords, but they do fit in place, and you're not going to have any issues with those. And then you have that. Now, you, the beauty of these is the fact that you can completely leave them off if you wanted to. There's nothing dictating the fact that you have to have the sheaths attached to the side of Scorpion. You can completely leave them off if you want. The other thing, of course, he's going to come included with his weapon of choice. Slightly looking different, but you still know the end result. Get over here. Uh, he comes included with his kunai. Now, of course, this does change over the course of the games, and obviously in the movie as well, it changes drastically. I'm very excited to see what's going to happen with the upcoming release Mortal Kombat live-action film. Apparently, it's going to be quite gory. But this version of the kunai still has the chain, and it's going to wrap around his forearm. show you that in a second. But what you are treated on the other end is not quite a hook. Well, it's still a hook, but it's a little bit more elaborate in design. It's still the coloring of that green and the familiar gold that we looked at with the sheath and the swords. As you can see, it's been attached to the chain, which has been given a washing of darker color just so that those chains pop and stand out. And as you can see, there's the end of it right there, sort of spiraling its way like a snake. I'm just going to take the figure. I kid you not, it could be any bit easier than this. You're just going to take the hand, take the arm, I should say, fold it around, just like that. And that's enough. That's all it needs. That literally is all it needs to hold it in place. Now, depending on, again, which way you have it, let's just fit that back over his arm because it came a little loose there. There we go. Um, you can kind of use the thumb as a bit of a guide. The end result, though, still is having the kunai firing out, shooting out from his arm. And uh, again, it's pretty stable and secure in place, despite the fact that you're actually not even pegging it in place. You sort of see how it's been wrapped around his arm. That's, again, all you really need to it. The other scorpion in the picture actually depicts the uh, secondary chain on this side, but this figure doesn't have it. And I don't have the other figures. I can do the comparison of it, but this one only comes with the one. It's on this side here. So I'm just going to take this off. And I think for the sake of the rest of this review, I might actually just take these off too, just so I'm not clipping and moving them. And obviously, the whole pur purpose of this review is I also want to be able to show you guys the close-up details on the figure, and I just don't want those sword sheaths to be in the way of things. Now, I could obviously just do a describing of back and forth of what this figure looks like versus what the regular release look like, but it'd probably be a lot easier if I just simply brought the packaging in so you could see just how drastically different they are from one another. You gotta believe, looking at the two, that the molds are identical to one another the same way that the exclusive version of Sub-Zero was identical to his regular counterpart. The only thing that has been changed for this is the mouth guard and then the coloring of the costume. Obviously here on the left side you get the more familiar Sub-Zero colors in the yellow and the black. Now swapped out to more of these earth tones of the lighter beiges, the striping on the side or the side bands done in a more military green. And he's got that same green color in the pants section here as well. It's quite the extreme when you look at the two side to side. And again, I'm just kind of keeping this for the time being in, in place so because I don't have the other figures, so I can show you guys what it looks like. Um, as you can also see, the big, big difference is also the mouth guard that's on this particular figure as well. Now painted in is the now visible teeth there. Sort of a very more samurai look to the portrait of his mask versus the more ninja-like of his original designs. I kind of like the look of this. I'm still honestly more in love with the original design of Scorpion, just because for me that is the most iconic look of Scorpion, but I gotta respect the fact that not only do we get variations in the game where you can customize, change the look of your figure, of the character, the fighter that you're using, but the fact that McFarlane Toys will actually give you exclusive 
variations of these figures. It's kind of the same stuff I was talking about when we looked at Johnny Cage and Raiden. I really want to see what they can do with like a Dark Raiden or variations to those figures that we had to look at before. I mean, the fact that they're doing an exclusive version of Sub-Zero and Scorpion that we've already looked at, I mean, certainly uh, there's a big landscape of what they can actually do with all the other characters as well. I'm just going to move that out of the way because certainly we don't want to be looking at a box this entire review. What we are going to be wanting to look at some close-up looks at the face. Very much uh, more kind of those old artwork stylings of the samurai armors where you had the mouth guard showing a visible teeth. And you really got that here with Scorpion. The mouth guard isn't removable. You can't take that off. Got some nice outlining around the whites of his eyes. Small details like that make the eyes stand out as opposed to just painting in splotches of white. Uh, the hood is not also removable. It's all completely intact. And speaking of intact, the way that they've actually done it, they've kept it so that you can completely still move the head quite freely. Um, and then we can just go ahead and tilt the head up. You can still tilt the head down. I want to talk a little bit about this just for a second. You do still have that bit of a noticeable gap when you move the head up and down, but the very likelihood that you're probably going to be moving the head that much of the extreme is probably slim to none. Even if you look, have it tilting up like this, it doesn't have the open gap that Sub-Zero had, for example. The rest of the armor is more very similar to uh, Raiden's in the sense that he's got the gold and the, the green colors. I mean, again, if we just bring in Raiden, who is completely actually omitted from the comparison of the figures, they are very much sharing similar color schemes, similar color palettes. Even like the greens are very much identical to one another as well as the golds. A really nice different take, as I said, to Scorpion, what we normally would get with the, the character. You get something very much different here when it comes to this particular Scorpion. What I also like about this particular figure is that there's layers to it. You see underneath there's an underlayer of an orange, yet very yellowish orange tunic or a shirt. And then you've got like this, the coloring of this, the additional tunic over top of it, of that cream beige color in the green. The front skirting is also slightly varied. This, of course, would have been yellow. This would have been black. Now we've got an orange and the more included green that we see as a carryover for all the other things that are on this figure. Gold in the shin guards, I'm liking the look of that. And it's just overall really neat looking design on this particular figure. He still has all the essentials when it comes to articulation points. Uh, this guy has 22 moving parts. 22 moving parts. We're going to look at those right now. Like his head rotates back and forth. Again, because this is all contained, you can still get a full range of motion. Um, it doesn't seem like, even if you look on the back of it, I mean, it does look like it's a separate piece, but at least it's not attached where it limits what you can actually do with the head. It's very clever the way that they've done that. Still, again, when you are tilting the head up, you are going to be noticing a bit of an opened area down below, but that's only at the extreme of moving the head that far up. I don't think the likelihood you're probably going to be doing it that high anyways. Uh, the torso is on a ball joint. It's a little bit more close for comfort. It's a little bit more tied up here with all the extra stuff that they've put over top of it. But you can still get a decent enough range of motion with the ball joint. You can move that torso back and forth and up and down. The only thing you really can't get too much access to is this part of the torso. You really can't get into there because, like I said, there's like so much stuff over top of it. The shoulders hinge outward, and uh, they are slightly stiffer on this one arm, but I can still get a full bend out. There we go. One thing I also like is that the shoulder, the little shoulder flaps that hang over, have just enough clearance to them that they don't get in the way when it comes to moving the arms outward. That can be actually the same said for when you are moving the arms back and forth. You can see right there, the flaps move out of the way. And that works the same on both sides. He has a swivel at the bicep, and this exclusive version of Sub-Zero has the same double hinge elbow happening. Hands also rotate all the way around, and you can hinge them back and forth. When it comes to the legs, his legs split. I've noticed with this particular figure, the ratcheted joints, what they are using for the construction of these figures, seem like it's a little noisier on this particular figure than some of the others that we've had a look at. The legs move forward and back, a little bit more limited, but you can still, you can still get like a full back kick if that's the desired look you want to go with, and you can still get to about there, front kick. It gets a little tighter after that. 
Uh, he has no... S well, he has a little bit of a swivel right at the very top of the thigh. And this scorpion also has a double hinge on the knee. He has slight rotation at the very top of the shin guards. And then he has a good amount of articulation in the feet. Back and forth ankle rocker, forward and back on the foot. And even has, the yes, the toe articulation as well. I'm liking the look of this Sub-Zero. To be fair, Scorpion, Scorpion, to be fair, Scorpion, I like this still the regular release, just more tried and true. It's more old-school design Scorpion for me, but I like the fact that McFarlane Toys is branching out. If they're going to be making use of the mold anyways, I mean, they have one created, realistically speaking. In the game, if you're going to be able to change and customize the look of the characters, after not often at times just changing the coloring of their costume, then it's more than feasible to be able to get figures like that as well in exclusive variants. This one, I think, has some interesting looks to it, different swapping outs of color. The end result, though, is not a bad-looking scorpion when it's all said and done. Generally, when it comes to player selections in the Mortal Kombat games, I keep it pretty vanilla. In other words, I really only keep to the original costume that the characters are featured in. I don't really go too much into customizing and changing things, which I know the newest Mortal Kombat is all about. Based on that, it's neat that the fact that we are actually getting figures based on slight changes to what you can actually do to the costumes in the game. Case in point here is Sub-Zero. Vanilla picking me would probably likely still choose the black and yellow costume because that's what I'm most familiar with. But I gotta have some respect for the idea that you can actually go into a game and be able to take the characters that you've grown up loving so much and be able to still customize them and change them to the way that you want them to look. And that's one of the neat aspects for the newest Mortal Kombat game. And one of the neat aspects for McFarlane Toys producing these figures based on the Mortal Kombat property is that he's able to go in and customize and change out the designs of these characters often at times if it's only just a change of color scheme, like with the Sub-Zero and the Scorpion here, that's fine. We're still getting variations to the characters that are based in the game and you can get another reasoning for why you would want to pick up a fantastic sculpt like this, like the one that's originally looking on the back of the packaging here. Uh, the original Scorpion, I definitely do still want to get my hands on, like the original Sub-Zero. I like these exclusives, and I like the fact that we do have variations to them, but old Vanilla Me, I think, would still choose the original look of these characters myself. I still like the fact that we do get figures like this, and when I do eventually find myself the opportunity to pick up an original Scorpion, most definitely I'm going to be displaying the exclusive variant here, along with the original Scorpion that I find later on. Did you manage to pick up this one for yourself? Now, keeping in mind, this is the exclusive variant of Scorpion. You probably are more familiar with the regular release of him featured on the back of the box. A big thank you to the folks over at McFarlane Toys who were nice enough to provide this sample that we had a look at in this review. What do you guys think of the exclusive variant of Sub-Zero? Or if you would prefer just the regular look of Scorpion. And that's okay as well for me. I'm probably, again, always picking the original looks for these characters. I don't change things up too much. I don't know. That being said, I probably will change up things more so as I pick up the newest Mortal Kombat game, which, as of right now, still haven't done it. I mean, obviously, with things going on in the world right now, shopping is probably the last thing you would, would want to be accomplishing. I know right now, if anybody was looking at this video years from now, they're probably thinking, what, what, what about shopping? But uh, I could see if I can maybe try to order Mortal Kombat 11 online, because obviously now that we've got Spawn, I'm pretty excited to play that game. I was a big fan of Mortal Kombat 10, and a lot of that one was more centric around horror characters. I kind of wish that we would get more horror characters in Mortal Kombat 11, but I mean, we have Spawn and Joker. That's not bad at all. Let me know down below in the comments section what you guys again think of the variants of, of Sub-Zero, or Scorpion, I should say. And let me know who you like playing as in Mortal Kombat 11. Also, if you're new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. If you are new to this channel, make sure you hit that bell notification. And if you are new to this channel, make sure you keep your peepers peeled. Ooh, that's gross. Because there's going to be a whole lot of videos coming your way. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.